Good afternoon. I hope there are many dads or dads to be in the audience today because this talk is especially for you. It is to tell you that you are important, that you do matter, and that you definitely deserve more attention. Along these lines, I would like to talk to you today about caring dads, about men as involved and confident fathers and caregivers. I'm telling you this story because I think that we should be paying more attention to the important role fathers play for their children, their families, and society overall. Although fathers have been getting increased attention more recently, their importance still remains underappreciated. By telling you this story, it is my hope that I can change this for the better, even if only a little. To start my story, I would like to take you back to a recent time when fathers actually received more attention than usual. This recent time was during the COVID-19 lockdowns here in the UK. We know from national surveys that during these lockdowns, Britain's fathers spent more time than ever interacting with their children because they almost doubled the waking hours every day that they were engaged in caregiving activities. This sparked the interest of the UK Fatherhood Institute, who carried out a survey-based study in a nationally representative sample of over 2,000 fathers with at least one child under the age of 12 years. And by doing so, this specifically focused on the first COVID-19 lockdown that happened in spring 2020. So what did that study find? Well, the study found that spending more time with their kids transformed that. After the COVID-19 lockdown, a majority of fathers reported that they now feel closer to their children, that they understand their children better, and that the relationship with their children improved. More than half of fathers also said that they now feel more confident in their ability to support their children's learning, in their ability to express physical affection towards their children, and in their ability to manage their temper, to remain calm towards their children, even under stress. Of course, some fathers also struggled, and especially those fathers who were not living in the same household with their children during that time. But for most fathers who were able to spend more time with their children, this experience was strongly positive and transformative. And they said that they would like to keep spending more time with their children even after the lockdown. For example, by having more flexible working opportunities or working more from home. Now, why are the findings of this study so important and relevant? Well, the findings are important and relevant because what has happened to UK dads during these COVID lockdowns is a strongly accelerated version of what has been happening to many other dads all around the world during the last decades and centuries. We know that these days, fathers are spending much more time involved in childcare activities than they were, for example, 50 or 60 years ago. And we also know that the role of fathers within the family have strongly changed. During the 17th and 18th century, fathers were mainly seen as stern patriarchs, as authority figures within their families. This change during the 19th century uh, as a consequence of the Industrial Revolution, which saw fathers removed from their households during most of the day. Therefore, fathers became distant breadwinners. At the beginning of the 20th century, fathers' function changed once more, this time to role models and playmates. And it was only from the 1970s or 1980s where fathers have been starting to be seen as equal as competent caregivers for their children. This change in fathers' roles within the family has also, uh, can also be seen in psychology theory. And one prominent psychology theory where this is evident is attachment theory, which was actually developed here in the UK by John Bowlby and Mary Ainsworth in the 1950s and 1960s. Attachment theory proposes that children form a strong emotional bond, particularly to those caregivers whom are most likely to pr provide children with care and protection when they need it. Interestingly, in John Bowlby's initial considerations, 
mothers are described as the primary caregivers of their children because when children are alarmed or hungry or ill, they are predominantly turning towards their mother. Conversely, Bowlby wrote that children would only seek the proximity of their fathers if they are in good spirits or if they look for a playmate. Luckily, a lot has changed in the underlying thinking of attachment theory since then. Today, attachment theory recognizes that fathers can be and actually are competent and involved caregivers for their children. And attachment theory also recognizes that fathers play a unique role in certain child developmental outcomes. And finally, attachment theory strongly advocates for more research on fathers and the father-child bond. Unfortunately, and despite these changes in, um, in the society and in, in the theory, psychology theory, and even though there is a lot of research performed these days on parenting, most of this research is strongly biased towards mothers. And this is particularly frustrating in social neuroscience research that is investigating the brain and biological basis of parenting because the findings in the social neuroscience on fathers that are available already, they, clear, they speak a very, very clear message. The most recent available research on fathers from a social, social neuroscience perspective clearly shows that dads, like moms, are biologically wired to be parents. When fathers transition, in, uh, when men transition into fatherhood and when they raise their children, there are many changes happening in their bodies and in their brains that prepare them for their new role as caregivers. Most importantly, however, the amount of biological and brain changes that happen in fathers are strongly associated with their level of engagement in childcare activities and also with their caregiving beliefs. Let me give you a couple of examples to illustrate my point. Let's start with testosterone. Testosterone is the male sex hormone. It ensures normal sexual development and function in men. But there is an intriguing relationship between male testosterone levels and their relationship and their fatherhood status. We know from many studies that testosterone levels are highest in single men and that they drop considerably once they enter a relationship or when they get married. And we also know that testosterone levels decrease even further once men become fathers. However, in fathers, testosterone levels not only associate with their amount of engagement in childcare activities, but also with their ability to respond sensitively and appropriately to their children's needs. Lower testosterone levels in fathers therefore ensure that they can focus inwards towards their families and nurture their children. But this only works if fathers are actively involved in childcare activities. And the story doesn't end here. We also know that in those involved fathers who have low testosterone levels, the levels of two other hormones change as well. And these hormones are the reward hormone dopamine and the bonding hormone oxytocin. When fathers interact with their children, when they play with their children and they cuddle their children, the oxytocin and dopamine concentrations increase. And this mechanism not only ensures that when fathers play with their children and fathers cuddle their children, they can form a strong emotional bond with their kids, but also that fathers themselves feel positive and rewarded. So it's a win-win mechanism for everybody involved. However, this only works if fathers are engaging in childcare activities and actually uh, interacting with their children and cuddling them. And finally, we also know that fathers' brains change too. When men transition into fatherhood and when they raise their children, a lot of rearrangement is happening on, in their brains, and especially in those regions that help them feel what their children are feeling, think what their children are thinking, and uh, orchestrating their caregiving and nurturing behaviors. But one more time, and most crucially, 
the amount of brain rearrangement that happens in fathers strongly associates with their level of involvement in child care and their caregiving beliefs. In a recent study of 50 fathers of five to six year old children, we looked at the association between brain structure and father's caregiving beliefs. For the brain structure, we focused on the hypothalamus, which is a small region deep within the brain that is important for keeping the body's balance. So it's involved in temperature regulation, food intake, the stress response, and many other things. But most crucially, it is orchestrating caregiving and nurturing behavior because it's the principal site of oxytocin synthesis. So we found that in those fathers who had the strongest caregiving beliefs, who indicated that they are, uh, are aware of their importance for their children and that they felt most positive and rewarded when interacting with their children, that in those fathers, the hypothalamus was actually the largest. Now we have to be a little bit careful here because what we found was just a correlation between brain size and father's caregiving beliefs. We therefore don't know whether those men who had a larger hypothalamus from the start went on to become fathers with the strongest caregiving beliefs, or whether fathers who were interacting with children and becoming confident fathers then grew a larger hypothalamus. However, it's still extremely interesting and intriguing that there was this direct association between fathers' brain structure and their caregiving beliefs. So what is the take home message of my story today? Well, it is that Fathers today already are, and they would like to be even more strongly involved in childcare than ever before. The take home message also is that dads, like moms, are biologically perfectly wired to be parents. But the most important point is that in fathers, the amount of biological and brain rearrangement that happens when they become fathers and when they raise their children is strongly linked with the amount of time they spend with their children, with the quality of the time they spend with their children, and with their caregiving beliefs, more generally speaking. So the more positive and confident the fathers are about their new role as caregivers, the more strongly their bodies and brains can adjust for their new nurturing and caregiving functions. So let's make sure that we give dads as much time and space as possible to interact with and cuddle and make this special emotional bond with their children and to make them feel as positive and confident as possible uh, in their caregiving roles. If we do so, this will not only benefit fathers, but their children, their partners, their families, and therefore society overall. Thank you very much. <laughs>